Hey everyone, this is Leo Loretti from Abstract Music Lab and thank you so much for the response on this first video that I did on my music production series. It was so amazing. And because of that, I decided to continue this track live to you guys. It's not live, but I'm gonna, you're gonna, guys gonna watch it over here. As usual, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe and let me know here in the comment sections what you're liking about this, what you're not liking, how can I make these videos better to you guys? And what kinds of songs you want me to produce next so I can definitely include these kinds of, of tracks here in the channel as well. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or you can buy my preset pack, both of available here in the description and in the top right corner. And also, if you want, you can go here to my free download section and you can grab here a lot of assets for Ableton, a lot of ebooks as well. I have a low end ebook, I have 35 mixing tips ebook as well. And I also have this guide over here that you can see and it has all the keys, all the notes, all the major and minor scales and everything. But let's get down to listening to the song and this is what we're going to start working with today. Different from the past session, uh, I've already named all the channels and I do this for all the tracks that I work with. They are all at the same color grading. They are all with the same drums, drop, bass elements over here in the beginning of the, the, the channel. And I do this because this is a little bit of track organization. Normally, whenever I'm producing, especially if I'm working on a track that is a year long or a year and a half long, it's always nice to go there and see something that you already understand from the beginning what you're working with. For example, uh, when I started this project is from 20 days ago because it was the last time I touched this one. And it just feels amazing because I know exactly that these are the bases, these are the melodic elements, these are the, the percussive elements, and these are the vocal elements, and these are the, the effects elements. And this is completely without checking here the sidebar which the, uh, with the names of everything. The sidebar just enhances everything and I named this way, I named with the tags here in, in front of everything because of how I mix and master my songs. Because I, after I finish the song, I stem everything out and put it in a different channel, a different project. And it's just going to help a lot. You figure out what you're going, it's going to help your organization of the track. And not only this, but it looks better than not doing it this way. And well, this is just why I do it this way. Um, based on what I, we listen and based on what we've seen here in the, in the video, there are a couple of things that I want to fix. There are a couple of things that I want to show that I've done off camera and a couple of things that probably need to go, let's say like this. Um, the first thing that I want to fix is exactly this over here. One thing that I hate is when the kick and the fills hit at the same time. Especially this first and this one over here. It's like both hitting at the same time and I don't like this. So what I'm going to do here and I do this for almost all eight, eight bar loops. I'm probably going to make this a bit longer because I like going big, small, big, small. So you can see, sorry, small, big, smaller, smaller, big, a bit a bit smaller but not as small as this one and then bigger than this one so probably something like this 
This way you, you get a nice feeling from the song. And I love these kind of breaks from the kicks over here. Just so you can see it within the track. It just gives a little bit of breathing room to the song, especially in the middle here. I love doing this. The only the other thing that I've done that was a little bit off camera, you can see how the arp was. It was kind of a melody, but I didn't want a melody over here because one, it didn't sound great. So I'm just going to make this how it was. This was this is a little bit off beat because I just did a quick uh, quantize, but I changed it to just a little bit of I already have two melodies going on over here. I already have this guitar going. I already have this piano melody. So having another melody would just confuse everyone a lot more. It's just something that is supposed to be in the background. It's not something that is supposed to be up front. So that's why I made it a lot more in the background. That's why I put it this way. I made the MIDI this way. The last thing, last thing that we need to fix that we worked on a previous project that you can see here in the top right corner, which is over here. And it's the ambiences. The ambiences have an issue, especially when you listen to the ambiences with the piano. I'm not sure if it's only this one. First of all, I'm just going to make sure that this is in key. So this is off key. That's the first thing uh, that we need to do. I didn't duplicate this. This sounds a lot better. The second thing is maybe this one. This is a lot better. And why did I do this? Well, because especially when I went to the break and you can listen to the ambiences without this. It was weird. There was something weird. But when we put this, this was in plus three over here. So this was in E while it should have been in D sharp. And now it's in D sharp. It sounds much better, much more soothing and hugging the track, which is what we want with this one. So just a couple fixes that we needed to do. There may be some more things that we need to do, but um, the s next thing that we're going to do is arrange the track. And why arrange the track now? I have a lot of uh, the, whenever I have classes with students, uh, they always ask me if they should arrange the track right away, if they should arrange the track in the middle or at the end, it depends what I like to do. And the way that I do it for almost all my tracks is I do a first section of the of the song. So either I do a drop, I do a break, I do a drop two, whatever. And after I finish this section, after I say, okay, this is good, this is a good idea, I can definitely pursue it. That's when I'm going to go and do something else and start arranging it to actually confine the track into how I want it to be like, why confine the track? Well, I have a post that I've written here, you can see here in the description below about limitations and limitations can actually help you develop your track a bit better because you you don't have to. If I say to you, develop your break in 10 bars in 10 eight bar loops, so in 80 bars, you're gonna have to drag it a lot. If you if I say to you develop your your break in four eight bar loops so in 32 bars, you're gonna have to make things a lot faster. But at least knowing that in 10 bars or in four bars, you know that you have to develop throughout 10 bars to, to throughout 80 bars or throughout 32 bars. At least you have a feeling of how, f how the pace should be like. If you don't have a feeling like this, it could end up leading you to, how can I say, uh, 
overextending the song, dragging on the song too much. So that's why I, I like doing this confinements. And how do I do this? Well, basically, I just come here and create some locators. So you can see this one over here, it's going to be the drop. This is how the drop is going to be. This is a bridge over here. And then we have the break over here. What I'm imagining for the break is I'm going to introduce the idea over here. Then I'm going to introduce this percussion that you guys are going to listen in a second. And then I'm going to probably introduce some melody over here. And then I'm probably going to switch this uh, progression over here to something else. Okay. What is this something else? Probably just going to go back to the melody before. Boom. Because I have to go back to the drop. I have to go back to the break. Sorry. I have to go back to the original melody here. So this is what I'm imagining for this song. And because of that, I'm just going to probably put this over here. And just to have a marker, this is going to end the break. This is going to be a build up. I'm not going to mark it, but just for the sake of it, I'm just going to keep it over here. And my drop, it's going to be probably four eight bar loops. So something like this. And then I'm just going to drag it on a little bit more for two more eight bar loops. So this is just going to end the song. This is going to be the kick less part of the of the outro. And ending the song over here. So two eight bar loops, a, a sweep down over here. And same thing for the intro. This is going to be the intro of the song. This is where the bass is going to start. This is where the song starts. So start bass drop one. Bridge, break, drop two, outro. This is going to be the baseless outro and end. Well, at least now I know how long my song is going to be. I know that my drop is going to be another four eight bar loops and I can't just repeat it. But at the same time, I need to make it a little bit more exciting than just the first one because it's the second eight bar, uh, the second drop. It's the most important part of the track. So it needs to be a little bit more exciting. It needs to be something else, at least something, uh, not a lot. Because if I just come here and copy what I have over here, I may over element it, if that's even a word. I, basically, I may have a lot of elements over here and it may lead me to not being able to grow because the more elements you have, the less space you have to grow. And the outro is just going to go down here. I'm just going to go further down. And basically, that's it. The break, what I'm going to do, as I told you, so introduction of the idea, introduction of percussions, probably going to add another percussion over here. I like every eight bar loops for something to happen, as I've told in my previous video. And if you want to see what I've done in the previous video, how I got it over here, you can see it here in the top right corner. I believe that I've already said that. But I also have an I want to add a new lead over here. Probably I'm going to have to change it. I've tested it with the original one, but it doesn't really work because I've t I changed the melody. And then I have to transition from this section to this section somehow. Probably, I don't, I don't know, probably just going to add the bases over here. So let me see if that works. This is the original bass. Let's listen to how it sounds like right now. This is really simple. I can already hear that it has sidechain that we need to get rid of it. There's no kick here, so no need for sidechain here. The percussion that I talked to you about. <clears throat> I feel that I must open this percussion. I not necessarily need to add more stuff, but I may want to open it possibly even add this or I can add this over here filter it a little bit the question that often comes to me is do you need the sidechain here in the break well, you don't need it because you're, you don't have a kick to sidechain that too. 
But if you want to use it as a creative element, you can definitely do it. There is a song from Alyssa. I have no, I don't remember exactly which one was it, but he uses um, he uses the 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 side chain as an as a creative element in the break. Can you do this? Yes, you definitely can. And I mentioned before that well, this is not a drop section. This, I don't have any kicks here, so I don't need any side chain. Well, Leo, what about this section over here? You don't have kicks over here as well. Well, but this is still within the drop section to me. Even here that I don't have any kicks at all, it's still within the drop feeling to me. So if I take the kick out of here, it just wouldn't feel the, the same rhythm as in the whole drop. So because of that, I see sidechain as a section thing and not as a, oh, whenever there's kick, I'm going to sidechain. I, whenever there's a kick section overall, that's where I'm going to sidechain. So as I told you, this is a kick section. That's where I'm going to sidechain. This is not a kick section. That's why I'm not going to sidechain this. Mm. Arp. As I told you, I'm probably going to come with I'm just going to create something with you guys over here. I'm going to try to find something that I like. I don't actually need this piano lowest notes over here. So I'm just going to copy this because I already I will have a bass on top of this. I will have a different bass over here as well. <clears throat> Not this bass because this is a plucky bass and I don't want a plucky bass for this section. Also, if you want to learn how to make these kind of bases, you can see the, the we can watch the video that I've just made over here in the top right corner. You, and over there, you're going to learn how to make five types of these pluck, plucky bases. I just go with serum right away. I don't have anything planned. I just create everything with you. And this base actually will be available on Splice soon. So be sure to look at if you're, I think that it's in April 20 something. I'll put a link here whenever available. And going back here to the song. Again, love these ambiences, so I'm just going to keep them over here. And again, I'm probably going to come with a melody here. Not in the piano. I want a melody here. Something like this. I actually really like this. I'm just going to play it again and see. I don't have any more. This is the highest I can go, so... Let's record this. <clears throat> this is going to change to the new section, which is the going back to the original part of the song, right? Because we've changed here the progression, as you can see it over here. It's not the same boom, 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 boom. It's just a, a piano note, two piano notes and, and just one kind of resolving everything. And that's why I also changed the melody over here. But I can also go back with the original melody as I had before over here. But again, the transition is just too abrupt. How can I make this less abrupt? 
I'm just going to play around with the bases over here. Probably this layer could have a little bit less um, base. So I'm probably going to start with it over here. And make it go up. Go down, sorry. But also, I don't want this is going to be a build up. So I'm probably going to just going to automate this off as well. From the beginning. It's going to be like a And then I'm going to go back here to the original section of the song. How can I do this? Again, probably just going to filter this a bit more as well. I just want to be as subtle as possible, the transition. I don't want it to be that erupt. I think that we can maybe change here the, the progression as well. Boom, boom. Just the last one because we want to signify that something new is coming. I'm just going to create here a scale Dorian just to help me out here. Boom. Yeah, I didn't like this note. Nope. Maybe this. Hmm. Too strange. Maybe this could work. Yeah, that's what that works. That works perfectly, actually. Is this the original chord? Nope. But anyway, it leaves it like this. So again, we're just creating something. Because the, tr the change over here is quite fast. It's boom, 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 boom. This one is quite slow. So we need to intensify the rhythm over here to make this be compatible with the change. And that's what I'm thinking about this way. It's going to quantize this. Maybe this one up. Horrible. Yeah, this note doesn't exist. Horrible. So I'm just going to make this last note a bit different. So it's just to go along with what I made over there. Also probably going to add a pad. So pads over here. Again, remember what I talked about writing the names and everything It's just a lot easier because I know that this is the pads. I know that these are over here are the piano is the piano melody and everything. It's just a lot easier to deal with that. Again, no side chain for that. And no side chain here. I'm just going to make this already. And no side chain over here as well. Again, the transition just ends, you know, I'm, I have to soften this transition. Okay, uh, if you want to know, learn more about transitions in electronic music, you can well, I can read this post here in the description below. I've wrote 10 ways in which you can make your transitions better. But you can also see how I can going to make my transitions a little bit less abrupt over here. You can see that it 
it just goes oops i interrupted it but again i needed to do this it just doesn't merge as well as it could it's already doing something because this effects over here which is one of the ways that you can help uh, create transitions listen without it it, it just doesn't connect like it feels like it's, there are two different sections you know and we want to make something that it's a little bit more one is is giving a hand and pulling the other one to it's pulling your the, the listener to the break so this helps a lot you can see how much of that ambience comes from this right but again still missing something um okay so another thing that i love doing for transitions is and i'm gonna use a new eq8 over here leo why not a filter well it's the same thing at least i don't notice that much of a difference there's a video from multiplier in which and i think that i can link it over here in which he says why he prefers auto filter instead of eq8 i just prefer eq8 it's just a lot easier So what I'm, I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna filter the low end. So this way we're going from a really big bass part, which is this one over here, to a non-bass part, which is this one over here. And by creating these, uh, these filters over here, let me see if we can bring them all at the same time so we can all see them. By bringing them over, over here, you can just soften your transition from one section to another because you're just taking that huge bass part to something that it's not a huge bass part. Already sounds much better, at least to me, like it doesn't sound that intense of a transition just so you can listen without it. Like, it's like, where's the bass, you know, like, we're just getting rid of the bass progressionally, so it's not so aggressive. Another thing that I love using is, oh, Cashmere has a lot of sweeps. So there are impacts. And these impacts, you have the impacts with sweeps and impacts without the sweep. What is the difference between both of them? I'm just going to grab this one just to show what the sweep is. Basically, the impact without a sweep is just this. With a sweep is this. It has a sweep in and then it goes to the impact. And this helps a lot. Just so you can listen. It may be a bit too loud. But again, it just connects one section into the other without it. Without, sorry. And with. It just brings you furthermore to the to the the new section. I love adding a there's one that I always add which is Oh. It's going to be a problem finding it right now. Big hall impact. It's mainly high end, but I like that it has a lot of content in the stereo. You can see it has a bit of a Haas effect over here in the high end. So everything above 600 has Haas effect. It, that's why it sounds stereo. Make it quieter. There you go. When do I add this? Well, normally I add this from base uh, from kick sections to non-kick sections. So over here, I'm 
ending the bridge, uh, I'm ending the drop and going to the bridge. So this is a kick section, not going to a, a non-kick section. It helps again, and I'm probably going to add this as well to any big changes that I have in my track. So for example, here during the break, when I'm going from this melody to this melody, this is a big uh, change to the song. So it again just helps you further take your listener from one section to the other. Perfect. Perfect. Um, do I need some percussions over here? Well, let's leave this for another moment. Another thing that I love right adding, and I kind of gave it away already, are risers. And I'm just going to grab some risers from previous tracks because uh, it's just easier. <laughs> Um, I don't I don't normally change that much, especially because I, I mainly want one specific riser. I want just a little bit of a wide noise riser. I don't use that much of tonal risers here in melodic uh, house. When I was producing melodic trance, it was a lot of, of um, tonal risers and everything, but I just don't want it anymore. It's just too much. It's just too aggressive for melodic house. I'm just bringing from previous tracks. Let me see if I can find that one that I want. I don't think it's this one. No. Nope. Mm, maybe this one has it. Yeah, I think that this one has it. Leo, but you're reusing a sample from another uh, another project. Isn't that is that okay? Why not? You know. I've heard an interview from Dennis Koyu, and he mentioned that he only uses four kicks in all his tracks. So if he can do it, why can't I? <laughs> but again, I think I, I found it. It's this, this one over here. It's just a wide noise riser with a little bit of low end content as well. So I want to add this probably in the bridge, probably in the end of this section as well. I don't know why this is coming orange and I want to I have an automation over there so I want to get this automation as well let me just do this and put it over here and over here just Leo what about LFO2 you had a little photo yeah LFO2 for whenever you have the drop sections whenever you don't have it you just can keep them down and I'm going to add this over here probably over here and probably over here again so I just want, anytime there's a big transition. Not for here, I don't need it here, but probably here I'll need it. And also here. Out. It just helps with a transition. It just helps signify that this is ending and this is going to a new section. Okay, I also need a bass over here. Now, ending a little bit of what we were talking about transitions, let's go back to recreating the break and we need to work on this section over here. We need to add probably as narrow. And again, just going to grab it from another project. Maybe I, I can just change the, the, sn the snare itself. Ozone Imager, it's not there. I don't mind. Cashmere. Something like this is already enough. And for here, again, I don't want the low end. I don't want the high end of it because this is melodic house. It's supposed to be gentle. It's supposed to not be that aggressive. 
So I'm just automating. You can see that it starts really low here in the in the the filter. Let's see if that works. Another thing that I need to add over here is a base. So bases for breaks to me, it's always, always, always uh, a drone base. So I'm just gonna, the root here is this one, then this one, then this one, but I want to play it differently. So MIDI. There you go. I don't want to play it this way. I want to play it this way. And creating one just from scratch. I'm not going to grab it from another project. Serum. For drone bases, basically. That's what you want. You want something. You don't want it to be in the center. You want it to be. This may be a bit too low. So I'm going to test it, putting it up. And also putting a filter because I don't want that granularity from it. Yeah, that works. could be just just came to my mind boom, boom. so let's go Again, here we did a little bit of a change, right? So we need to change and follow this. So this goes B, A, mm. here. The root is D sharp. Mm, is it D sharp? Yeah, I think it is. And boom, boom, and D sharp again. <clears throat> We're about to end the session. And I'm happy that I made progress. Probably something like this. Oh. I don't like the bass over here. It just sounds weird. So this probably here. Bass is here.
But, again, I'm going to a section where I don't have much base again. So what I'm going to do again is just get rid of this base over here. Because I want this to have a big impact as uh, the same way that I want this section, the drop two, to have as much impact as well. We need, still need to work a little bit on this transition and we're going to do this in the next video. I think that this is enough for today. We've worked on the break, we've worked on the arrangement, we've worked on transitions. Uh, so I hope you took a lot of this session. And also, since we're ending this session over here, this is what we have towards the end of the session. And that's it. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the tutorial today. If you liked it, you can hit the like button. If you loved it, you can subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel a lot. And also, if you want to support us, you can buy us a coffee, you can buy our preset pack. And also, as I said in the beginning, leave it here in the comment section if you liked the video. It helps us a lot to understand what you guys want and how we can do it better, the content to you guys. So. Let me know here in the description what you like, what you didn't like, and how we can make this better, what kind of song we can make it in the, last, in the next sessions as well. And I hope to see you soon in the next abstract video next week. Ciao!